So the grommeting kit did arrive before we got good enough weather to do the test. And this is what I did with it. Now I did get one on there backwards. You can see maybe it's a little more smooth on this side, whereas all these are rough. This is the back side where all the rough ones are. And this is the front side where all the nicely domed ones are. The one thing that occurred to me is that perhaps a simple square like this could be used as padding for inside of a long glove like this. So what I'm going to do here is stick that under my arm, bring it down to about wrist level there, and give it a little snip. I want it to be about arm length. Now I'm just going to grab it like this, pull out a little bit of length, I'm going to go over the top here, and then over the top of the part I throw threw over, pull it that way like that, just a simple slip knot. I'm going to stick that through like that, lay it on my arm, bring this end up through here, come back around, put that in there, and then just tighten it down. One good thing about this being thin is that it'll fit better into the glove than a heavier material would. I'm going to loop it once around the joint of my wrist, like so. I'm going to come up between my middle and index finger, and I'm going to put it through this hole and put it like that. And that should allow me to push into the glove without this slipping down at all. Because even though it's lightweight, there's still this little bit of a lip to get past with it. Now it does leave a little bit to be desired here and in the front, but it gives good wrist padding and it seems to give sufficient forearm padding. Now that's not hitting too hard, but I would never hit that hard without this and the glove on. I wouldn't hit that hard with the glove on. I'm feeling the sting, but again, I would never hit that hard with even just the glove on. I, uh, that seems pretty sufficient. And it's not too hard to get on and off. So that could be one use for this lighter form of padding. But of course I will be cut testing it now that it's all ready to go. So the weather absolutely will not permit doing a cut test outside today. Expecting wind speeds of 40 to 60 miles per hour and it's probably already up to 20 to 30. Nice and sunny, just you wouldn't be able to hear a thing. The camera might get knocked over not doing it outside today. I'm just going to do it inside instead. I have these little bags of air from things that have been shipped to me. So I figure with the way that moves, the bag might pop. But, look at that. I think that'll work. So the way I'm probably just going to do this is bring this through here, put that through there, and tie it around the back. And I'm going to do the same on this side. This may at some point make a loud popping sound. 
Now my machete, which I always keep very sharp for doing yard work, is likely going to be the thing I have at the moment that has the most cutting potential. You can see it's not perfectly straight. It's got a bit of a curve and it really curves off at the end. I am going to be push cutting and draw cutting So, on a really good push cut, and, and it was fairly hard, I got this to open up. And then I realized something. I tied the wrong side down. So I've retied it with the correct side facing out. This is the cut damage from the best one I was able to give it where I really dug in. It split the fabric even though it's cut because of all the quilted stitching it's held on. Only went through at the deepest hardest part. It only went through a single through a single layer of wool. So now I'm going to try blunt stabbing. I'll give a few hits like this. A few brushing motions like this with the tip. Roughed up some of the uh, fiber, one of the thrusts did give it a little bit of a break there. But what's good about this is if it rips, because it's also held down all around wherever a tear is going to occur, you can just throw a patch over that. It seems to hold up sufficiently to push and pull cutting and to blunt thrusts. I gave this thing a pretty good beating front and back and overall I'm pretty pleased with how it went. I think I might want to go with a 10 ounce fabric instead of an 8 ounce. Maybe good for practicing with synthetic swords, maybe wooden swords, probably not metal swords, not this all by itself. For sure though, there will be more tests to come down the line and I'll keep refining this. For now, have a good one.